any questions on the liquidity pool contract before we start to go over the properties? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Um, flash loan should increase the contract supply by fee amount. This is a very important property. What is it actually checking? It's actually checking even more because the main concern with flash loan is that um, somehow reentrancy, some other way, it will uh, reduce the, the contract's total supply. So actually checking that it increases, this is a very, very important property. So it's a unit test property, but I will always say that it's uh, under the risk assessment properties. One should uh, be able to withdraw after depositing. So this is like integrity of withdraw. And what will you say that if someone holds LP tokens, one should be able to withdraw, okay? Um, and this is kind of the revert characteristic. It's a little bit tedious, but it is very important. What you will get when you try to write this rule, you will get many reverts, okay? You will get that um, you send some e-message value and it's not a payable contract. You will actually get, if we look at the code, and we can look at the withdraw, okay? Um, you will get that um, the transfer from here also has overflow. The overflow is the max uh, balance in the uh, asset. So there will be a lot of um, things that can go uh, wrong, but it's a, an important property. One way to check this kind of properties is actually to do the comparison, okay? If someone can withdraw, I can also withdraw. Okay, that's one comparison. If I can withdraw um, one, I can withdraw all my shares. Okay, but these are actually weaker than, right? Because it does say that if there is someone that can withdraw, what if no one can withdraw? So uh, it, sometimes it is worth doing the whole revert characteristic rules, okay? Um, in this case, I think it won't be too bad, but on real code, um, it's a lot of revert cases, okay? So, and this is also one way. If I deposited, deposit, and immediately withdraw, no revert. So this is another way to get rid of all the different reverts, okay? Because if you deposit, that means that on, on the same end, it means that your e-message value will be zero. You have balance in your asset token that you are depositing. And then this can be actually nice, okay? Shares to amount and amount to shares should be each other inverse. Is this always true? Should we look at the code? Is this big enough what I'm showing? Shares to amount, amount to shares. What do you say? If... Um, some X, I get some Y, I put the Y here, will I get this back the same X? Right? What happens with these? Okay, so yeah, these rules, you can write them, they will not hold, okay? 
as we said, uh, the goal of the Sotor approval is to find violation. It will easily find a violation that it doesn't hold because of the divisions. Okay, so what you can say is up to one. Um, sometimes it's not up to one, right? Um, these are not that easy to prove, but uh, there are things that you can prove about it. You can say that um, um, if I put some, if I put some amount, okay, I get some shares. The amount that I should get back should be not greater, right? I mean, no one should gain not even one from depositing and withdraw. So that is something that probably we can prove. What else we can prove is that um, the amount of sh shares and shares to amount are monotonicity, meaning that the more you put in, the more you get. Again, you will not be able to prove strict um, inequality. It will always give you the case that, okay, it can still be equal, but it shouldn't be less than. Okay, so um, almost, right? Almost due to rounding arrows. Always should be able to deposit enough balance, should catch division by zero error when calculating the shares. Yeah, this is, um, this is right, and we will, again, revert characteristic is, um, is a lot of small details, okay? If we look again at the code, yeah, there will be the option that, amount to share that it, yeah it should check that right that we are taking care of this the first deposit this is nice um, and it will actually revert on the fact that it's not payable it revert on the fact that the system already has max U int amount in the asset. So, right, again, and it will probably revert that the current total supply is also max U int and all of that. So, it's a nice property. It takes, it's a stake time. Okay. Nice. Valid state fees should be less than 1%. Okay, so um, so I would first of all add to the unit test something about computation of the fee, right? And should be less than 1%. Um, Yeah, the reentrancy status, this is nice. What else about the, let's go over and then maybe I will add a few more, okay? Um, yeah, reentrancy should be not entered. So you always start with not enter and every time you leave with not enter. So um, this is a valid state, but notice that it doesn't check reentrancy, okay? Think of a bug that I will now remove the non reentrancy check here. Okay? The valid state will not check will not catch this, right? So how can we actually check the reentrancy? Any ideas? Yeah, that's nice. So what you want to check? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that is, so that what we want to check. We will want to check 
that um, there was a change to being entered. Okay, that will actually check for us re-entrancy. Okay, so we can say that any function that is not a view function, right, we passed from the non-enter state to the enter state and back to the non not entered. Okay, we can do that with um, a nice feature that is called ghost. We will discuss that tomorrow and we can actually check and make sure that there is a re-entrancy check okay so let's go back to this right so this um, should be checked with a ghost that makes sure we passed in the entered state okay um okay and actually one thing about the nice high level properties is that um they should also fail if the re-entrancy guard is missing okay so um we will get to that okay state transition so uh, we have an LP provider, right? One becomes an LP provider on deposit, right? He should only stop being an LP provider when he withdraw. So this, for example, makes sure that on flash loan, no one uh, can uh, become a LP provider. Um, it also checks that by doing a flash loan, no one else stops being an LP provider. Um, okay. And there is more to check here, right? Um, we can start by being um, only the message sender can change its, its state, right? Only message sender can change his state. Total supply can only change. The asset variable does not change. The, this is... Um, this is nice, okay, uh, but if it's a mut mutable variable or something like that, then I wouldn't bother even writing a rule, okay? It, sometimes you do want to make sure, okay, it stays uh, muta mutable, but it's I would say that this is like a low, right, a low property to write. Amount per share should increase. This is a very nice one. Um, I wouldn't say that it's under the variable change because we don't have a variable that holds this, um, this value, amount per share. I would actually say that this is in the high level. Okay, let's move it. Amount per share should increase only if flash loan is called. Great. I would put this... Right, under the variable, under the risk even assessment, right? If the amount per share decreases because of a flash loan, there was someone uh, drained the protocol, right? The, the protocol, instead of gaining, lost uh, many. So, um, yeah, I would put this even on the risk or, or the unit test of flash loan. Let's put it under the risk. This is a very serious risk. This is actually, right, many of um, the critical issues were due to flash loans. Okay, um, high level, amount per share should increase. The total supply of the system is less than or equal to the underlying. For each user, the contract should always hold more than the corresponding shares of the user. Yes, definitely. There is also a nice set of properties that I call them total assets of users. And this is something that I like to do where I say, I want to look at the total value of the user. What should happen? So there is the token balance of user plus probably some kind of a function 
on right on this the current system balance of the user so it's like what I, what I have externally plus what I have internally in the system this should be preserved now it's not quite clear that it's preserved because sometimes when we if I deposit and immediately withdraw I might lose a little bit so when should this stay the same when should this increase when should this um, um, decrease okay um, so these are very nice high level properties in our case the f will just be shares to amount right shares to amount okay um, okay risk assessment so we talked about the amount per share should increase only if flash loan is called a user cannot withdraw twice a user cannot withdraw almost everything twice so what is almost and how do you define almost in a formal way this is um this is not easy okay um right we many times we get requirement that want us to check that uh, the price shouldn't change drastically we always find counter examples okay so um right so if you say um if i would withdraw more than half twice that's an issue right um okay so we can just define this as more than half but i think also this let me think about it because what's half there is the rounding issue issue right so um yeah if you do greater than half twice i think it should be fine so uh, yeah it's not easy right because the division it makes life very complicated right because there is always the rounding down um, in general also um, I have I always when we look at division we want to say when should the rounding down be in favor of the user and when should the rounding down be in favor of um, the system usually it should be in favor of the system okay so uh, no one should gain from the rounding error call to external revert if state is entered yeah exactly so this actually checks our callback right when withdrawing a non-zero amount the shares of the user should decrease when withdrawing a non-zero amount the shares are, yes definitely okay um yeah let's i have a few more idea let me paste them here and see if we covered everything okay ah oh, this is not nice okay so um unit test for calculating the fee um right um so usually usually the fee is um is not a constant in most system it is something that can be changed by the owner by the governance but there are some properties that we want to check so we want to check a max value we want to check monotonicity so this will be the unit test for the calc prime and some more properties i think we discussed this so amount to share and shares to amount when should they be zero um and i i like to check unit test for even for cases that i don't see that they are being called with this parameter so we might see that yeah there's always a check for zero 
But if I have a unit test rule, I'm taking into account future optimizations and stuff like that. Monotonicity. So if X is less than Y, then the amount to share should be less or equal. Again, because of the rounding. If I will, if I will try to prove this, well, it's very easy for the prover to find the violation, right? Inverse, so we discussed the inverse, so this is not easy to prove because it's not necessarily um, equivalent, it's close, and it's not even by one. I, someone can try this out and see what, what gets. Okay, so flash loan, more risk analysis, I think we discussed. So increasing... Um, the amount of shares, we can all actually say that it should increase the system balance. Now this is, will be simpler to check. Should not change the total supply. We are very, very afraid of flash loans, right? Those are the critical part. Some more valid states. So we did say that, um, that the total supply is less than the underlying balance. But can the total supply go down to zero? It shouldn't go down um, to zero if there is still some underlying balance of the system, right? Because that means that someone didn't get its parts of the share. So um, um, it should be zero if and only if the underlying balance is zero. So this is like the starting state and then when someone deposits, we make sure that total supply is increasing only if the underlying balance is increasing. Um, the issue in checking this kind of invariance is always the withdrawal. Again, the prover will find um, cases where one of them becomes zero. And we have to carefully understand what is the precondition that holds that we can actually assume. Okay. Um, if balance, um, yeah. So another variable transition or is the balance of the user. When should it change? Um, and another high level rule, and this is the main issue of the system, right? The main issue of the system is that LP providers are gaining some fees from, right? They want to increase their assets. So on flash loans, the LP provider's values should increase. Um, again, never easy because the pro prover will find a violation that it stays the same. But we can work with it and actually prove that it will increase. So if someone increase, LP provider should increase. What about front running? Are we all familiar with the front running issues? Yeah, any questions? Yeah. So front running is I want to perform some transaction, but somebody's looking at my transaction and doing something um, immediately before me. Okay, a lot of the price manipulation is out like this. So we can also check front running issues. So if I can withdraw X, I, I, will, I can also withdraw it if someone else has performed some operation. So this again will check if someone can influence the amount uh, to share function or something like that. Okay, nice set of rules. Um, now we can actually start running rules and writing rules. So in the tutorial, well, sorry, the other way. So in the tutorial, we have the liquidity pool directory. We have here a beginning pool spec. Um, a few of the rules that we have discussed during the um, defining the properties. There is an example of a ghost here. So we still haven't went over this. Um, uh, we will do this tomorrow. But this is just... So you have the general idea that these are things that we can check. So the ghost is actually 
uh, what we suggested, we are looking at the variables of the system and we are tracking things. And here we are tracking the sum of all balances and we are proving that the sum of all balances is the total supply. Okay. Um, if someone wants to try out something with the ghost, please just ask us around and we will help. Okay, so we have the pool spec, we have um, the run script, okay? So part of the system, we have the liquidity pool, we have the underlying asset, and we have a symbolic receiver for the flash loan, okay? The asset ERC20 is a simple ERC20, we assume it's a safe one, and in the spec, we can reference it by underlying balance of. Okay, you have what we discussed yesterday, the using asset ERC20 as the underlying. Okay, so this um, sets up our underlying and we have the flash loan receiver. So on, yeah. So flash loan receiver will be the only possible receiver because of this uh, dispatcher tool. So this is something we discussed yesterday. Let me go a little bit more into detail here. What the prover actually does when, when it reaches a call statement. Okay, so here's our call statement to the flash loan receiver. It actually asks which contract implement this function and it takes into account all the different implementations of this function. So it's like building a big if here. If the flash loan receiver is contract A, call contract A. If it's B, call contract B. In our case, there is only one. So it will always call this one. You can look and see if you agree with the flash loan receiver we have implemented here. Um, what we have done here, we have done something that is what we call uh, symbolic. So we have either that it does a transfer and look at this, the transfer is not necessarily to the same asset that we are working with. And it also trying to transfer any type of um, amount. X is again, it's a symbolic value. When you see a contract that is called symbolic, assume that they, the global variables can be any, va any value, right? It's not zero. Okay, although you don't see any assignments to this, it's because it's only used in our prover. So we have one option that we do transfer and we have two options that we actually call back the pool, the liquidity pool. So we are actually trying to, to do a re-entrancy attack here. Okay, and we wanna make sure that our rules are actually checking this. So if we will remove, and we will check our spec later on, we will remove, we will insert bugs, we wanna check that our rules are broken. Um, okay, um, okay, so I suggest to start writing rules. You have um, the run script, and um, yeah, any questions? Okay.
it's a, yeah, it's an interesting discussion. Um, so, so one one thing that we sometimes do is that, for example, on bridges we do this is that. Uh, we try to simulate the different calls from the different side. Usually when we verify a contract, we have the main contract. This is the contract under, under state. We do a mock or we do a simulation to all the rest and we check one contract. So um, this is an interesting idea, how to check better systems that are built from different different contracts so yeah if if i understand what you say if here we do something that is a function of the amount to shares or share to amount it's broken right so if here i call a uh, balancer and balancer computes my um, amount to shares then it's um right and it might give me a better price or something like that Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, complicated. Yeah, thanks for uh, raising this up. Again? Yeah, we, ch we check transaction. We can check internal functions. We actually, what we do, we wrap them um, and we have a call to them. Um, but on like the general idea is that we, we check transaction, we check before and after. Yeah, yeah. So we, we can reference um, um, yeah, we, we basically write another, f uh, another, um, another contract that wraps. We also check libraries like that. We, we wrap the libraries. And then you basically trust the compiler to basically, uh, wrap the code the same way as if it were internal. So the code base is yeah, because it's still an internal call. It's just a different contract, but we trust it to be, to be the same. Um, we find bugs in the compiler because we do work on the EVM bytecode, so uh, we have found a few issues um, just from be needing to manipulate the the EVM and the bytecode that is generated. Okay, so um, yeah, let's um, well, let's write rules. Um, this one script, um, just want to add one more thing. This one script uh, does take some time. So if you want to run just one rule, you have the minus minus rule option. And yeah, we can even set up the one script that it will be, maybe I'll do that now that you can just give an argument. Yeah, I'll fix this. Okay. Any more questions maybe?